optimized for SAC. And we bared all those facts to NASA. Uh, we told them that it was maybe a 60-70% chance, but we thought it was worth it. And I guess we were pretty persuasive because they bought the idea. Soon after Voyager 2's closest approach to, to Saturn, in fact, while it was behind the planet, its scan platform got stuck. It had a mechanical failure. And we weren't able to aim the cameras and the other pointable instruments on the spacecraft at the targets. After several years, we concluded that, in fact, during the Saturn encounter, we had moved this platform too much, too fast, and that if we used the platform in a consistently slow, at a slower rate, and if we constrained the total amount of angular motion that we applied to the platform, then in fact, we would be in a pretty safe condition. Voyager 2, the amazing robot spacecraft that was launched eight and a half years ago and just kept on going, passed yet another milestone today as it became the first spacecraft to fly past the planet Uranus. Uranus is not a very photogenic place. Uh, it looks more or less like a big blue ping pong ball. But we did see clouds in the atmosphere of Uranus and they did tell us something. In fact, uh, Uranus is a tipped over version of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, the, the cloud patterns are more muted, but they have the same kind of banded structure that Jupiter and Saturn have. Now what that says is that the spin of a planet is the all important uh, process or thing that organizes weather. Uranus is a very peculiar planet in the sense it's tipped on its side uh, right now uh, with the su uh, south polar region uh, headed, uh, pointed at the sun. Uh, we had expected that the magnetic field pole uh, would also be up near the rotational axis, so the magnetic field would be tipped on its side. What we found was, uh, to everyone's surprise, that the magnetic field, rather than being pointed at the sun, was tilted some 60 degrees from the rotation axis. Not only that, but the center of the magnetic field was displaced from the center of the planet by almost a third of the radius of the planet. Uranus's magnetic field uh, is a bit stronger uh, than that uh, on, uh, on Saturn, uh, and it extends some 300,000 miles uh, from the planet. The rotation period, that is the length of the day on Uranus, is measured by how rapidly the magnetic field is rotating, is about uh, 17 and a quarter hours. The big problem going on to Uranus is that it's twice as far away from the Earth as Saturn is. In order to compensate for the, uh, for the darker environment, we had to make sure that the spacecraft would be steadier. And to make the spacecraft steadier, we had to deal with the things that made the spacecraft move while it was just flying through space. The Uranian rings are inherently dark. In fact, they are no brighter than coal dust. So imagine trying to take an image of coal dust at twilight, but it's even worse than that. So um, we had to worry about the necessity of using long exposures and the fact that the spacecraft scan platform is not a stable platform and always moves someone. The best image that we got, in fact, of the Iranian ring system we had to use image motion compensation. What we saw in that image is a sheet of dust that extends throughout the Iranian ring system. And this sheet of dust is punctuated by, by features, many of them. There are more features in that picture than there are rings seen from inbound. So we have nine narrow rings seen in the inbound images and one newly discovered one, the lambda ring. As a matter of fact, if we had our choice, we never would have gone close to Miranda. In order to get to Neptune, we were uh, obliged to go a particular distance from Uranus in order to get the right gravitational deflection on the spacecraft. Well, it turned out that that distance was exactly the distance that Miranda's orbit is from Uranus. It is a very exotic and complicated place. Most of the regions that we uh, viewed are heavily cratered old rolling ancient terrains but embedded in these are very unusual 
uh, circular patches, almost like racetracks of groove terrains that run around in circular bands surrounding very complicated uh, crisscrossing structures in the interiors. We address the, uh, the question, what can we do to hear the data better? We did come up with a technique called arraying, where we took existing antennas and electronically wired them together so that, in fact, it had the appearance of being one larger antenna. And uh, we did that uh, in Australia, the primary receiving site at, at Uranus, and combined the uh, uh, DSN's stations with a bowed antenna from the Australian radio, radio astronomy community uh, at Parks. Radio 5, Parks. Uh, stand by, Parks. While we were moving from Uranus to Neptune on the ground, we had two major things to do. First of all, we reprogrammed the software on board the spacecraft to do two things. To stabilize the spacecraft so that the pictures would not be smeared, and to add some new techniques to the spacecraft that would allow it to pan and track the, the planet when we were taking pictures near the planet. Second thing we had to do was improve the communications capability. Uh, we did that since, the, since Neptune is twice as far away from a communication standpoint as Uranus. Uh, we did that by enlarging the size of the antennas on the Earth and by adding several new sets of antennas into our deep space network to help compensate for the distance. It is mission accomplished for Voyager 2. The space probe is headed out of the solar system tonight after photographing parts of the universe no one had ever seen before. Now we had some hints from Earth-based observations that Neptune had a few clouds, and at least that was better than Uranus. But we really weren't prepared for the spectacular weather activity that uh, Voyager found. In fact, Neptune is the windiest planet in the solar system, and I was totally pre unprepared for that. The winds are 325 meters per second. That's the speed that the great dark spot is moving relative to the inside of Neptune. Everything's going to the east, but the great dark spot is going more slowly to the east than the inside of Neptune. We had expected, because Neptune does, is not tipped on its side as a planet, but is an upright planet, that the magnetic field axis with axis would be aligned with the rotation axis. That is, the poles would be near the rotational pole. We were surprised again the magnetic field is tilted by 47 degrees in the case of Neptune, and its center of the magnetic field is offset by almost two-thirds of the radius of the planet. Its magnetic field is somewhat weaker, only about half of that of Saturn's, for instance, at the surface, uh, and its magnetic field extends only about 400,000 miles from its surface. We did uh, discover that the rotation period of the magnetic field uh, is about uh, 16 and, uh, hours and seven minutes faster than Uranus, but slower than both Jupiter and Saturn. System, is that control? Fred? Yes, sir. I'd like to report that the scan platform is in the proper position as expected. Uh, as we approached Neptune, we were approaching with the sun and the Earth almost directly behind us, so you could see a virtually a full disk of Neptune. And we aimed to go right over the North Pole, right up over the